This is a review of the Asus VivaBook Flip 14. Model number in here somewhere. So, let's get into it. So first off, this thing is only 400 bucks at Walmart. And at this price point, I expected a lot worse than what it is. And at 400 bucks, the build quality is surprisingly not bad. I mean, there's not too much screen flex or anything like that. Let's take a look at I.O. here. On the left-hand side here, we've got two USB-A ports, both 2.0, a card reader, two indicator LEDs, one for charging, one for power, a physical volume and physical power button. These are pretty common on two-in-ones, which of course this is, as you can see. Over here on the right-hand side, we have a normal barrel plug type charger thing. This thing doesn't have USB Type-C charging, unfortunately. We have a full-size HDMI port, USB-A 3.0, USB-C, and a combo headphone and mic jack. On the back here, we have a couple of speaker grills, so it's definitely backfiring speakers, which isn't ideal, but for this price point, kind of to be expected. We have a single intake grill here for air, and oddly enough, what looks like one actual vent for cooling, and one that is like sort of fake because it's covered in plastic. On the top deck here, we have a fingerprint reader. The trackpad could be larger, but again, price point. And the keyboard itself doesn't feel bad. It's very subjective, obviously, but it doesn't feel bad at all. Pretty thin bezels for a cheap laptop as well, but it comes at a cost. Unfortunately, the webcam is located down here on the bottom, which is, of course, not ideal because if you are doing any kind of video calls, people are going to be looking right up your nose, and that's not good. And of course, being on the cheaper side, the webcam isn't great to begin with. Honestly, I think they should have just cut the webcam because, as you can see here, the quality is pretty terrible, even with proper studio lighting. It just looks terrible. It's low resolution, it's very low frames per second, it just doesn't look good. They could have cut the webcam altogether on the bottom and just put in like a 1610 screen or something like that. That would have made a lot more sense and would have been a lot better for something at this price point as kind of uh, an extra. There are some things though that surprise me, like the network card for instance, which actually has 5 gigahertz capable wireless. That's surprising on a lower end machine. A lot of cheaper laptops really cheap out on the network card and you'll find 2.4 gigahertz only. That's not the case here. I'm connected to a 5 gigahertz network just fine, and it works. The fingerprint reader is also pretty nice to have at such a cheap price point. It's not perfect. Sometimes it fails to register, you know, the first couple of times, but it works. It's Windows Hello, and while I think we can all hope that, you know, facial recognition would be included instead, at least it's something. There's also surprisingly little to no bloatware in this thing. I remember it wasn't that long ago that really cheap computers only got that far because of how much bloatware was installed on them. Everything from free antiviruses to cleanup software and storage, all kinds of garbage. It was horrible. If you want any of that, you'll just download it. I I'm happy to say it's not the case here. There's McAfee personal security, but it doesn't even seem to be activated out of the box. And that's probably because of S mode, but we'll get to that. Microsoft 365 is also included, but I kind of find that to be bloatware myself. If I wanted to use Microsoft Office, I would just install it. To be honest, I don't know anyone that just doesn't use Google Docs now anyway, so, you know. I really wish the trackpad was bigger. I could deal with it being at a smaller size like this if it was better, but it's just pretty bad. It's just, I, maybe the right word is sluggish. It doesn't feel great. It surprisingly has a 1080p screen. That's another thing that's usually cut on these devices at lower ends. You'll find like a 768 display or something like that. But it's full 1080p and the viewing angles, which probably aren't gonna be shown very well on video, are surprisingly good for what they are. I'm not sure what type of display technology it uses. I couldn't really find that readily available, but yeah, the, the viewing angles are really good. I, I can't say anything bad about that. Now onto the actual hardware. The processor in this particular unit is an i3-8145U, and while that is a pretty low-end part, it could be worse. We could have like a Pentium or something, so eh, could be worse. The RAM is unfortunately only 4 gigabytes, and that's just not enough for Windows, to be honest. If you're going to pick this thing up, I would recommend you get another 4 gigabyte stick minimum. 
Windows does not run well, even in S mode, on 4 gigabytes of RAM. I don't know why anyone continues to make computers with 4 gigabytes of RAM, but they should really stop. As for storage, we have an SSD, but the problem is it's only 128 gigabytes. That's just not enough for much of anything today. I mean, just having Chrome installed with Windows, we're left with 74 gigabytes. That's not a lot. Especially seeing as something like a game is going to take up a ton of storage. Granted, it's not like you're going to be playing games on this thing, but still, it's just not a lot of storage. Another thing I forgot to mention is that it does have backlighting on the keyboard, which is great, but it's only like three adjustable modes of brightness, which I prefer like a slider. But at this price point, at least you get backlighting, which is something that not all these devices can claim. So let's get into the performance. And as I'm sure you could probably guess, it's not great. I don't know why so many companies continue to make Windows laptops that only have four gigabytes of RAM. Clearly it's a, it's a cost cutting measure, but it's bad for consumers. There are so many of these things, these cheap devices at Walmart or on, or on Amazon, to, uh, Best Buy, wherever, and they're not good for anyone, pretty much. There were nine individual models at the Walmart near us that had four gigabytes of RAM. It's just not enough. In pretty much any situation, even in S mode, which is supposed to be Microsoft's secure and performant version of Windows 10, it's not enough. Speaking of S mode, I don't understand why Microsoft ever thought this was a good idea either. If I ask 10 random people, what Windows 10 in S mode is, 90% probably won't know what that is. You and I might, but the normal consumer, the one who's probably going to buy this, has no idea what that is. It's not as bad as something like Windows RT that literally couldn't run any third-party executables that didn't come from the Windows Store, but it's still pretty bad. Sure, you can switch out of S mode pretty easily, but it's a level of complexity that just should not exist. And quite frankly, why would you buy a machine that couldn't run third-party apps that don't come from the Microsoft Store? If you wanted to strip down OS, why wouldn't you just buy a Chromebook? Speaking of Chrome, the performance there wasn't great either. After installing it and just having three tabs open, which is not unreasonable by any stretch of the imagination, I was down to just 800 megabytes of free RAM. It's just terrible. No computer should have four gigabytes of RAM. Most modern phones have more than four gigabytes of RAM. All that being said, I did take some benchmarks of the actual hardware. First up, Cinebench R20. As you can see, it got a score of 802 points, which is not great, but it could be much worse. It actually got that score too, without overheating. It didn't thermal throttle at all. It maxed out at around 88 degrees, which is by no means cool, but at least it's under the threshold. I also decided to run some games on it, which isn't probably what you're gonna use a device like this for, but I figure it's worth a shot. I started with Oblivion, because it is the best game ever made. You, I have seen you. Let me see your face. Gods give me strength. And it's a pretty good test of hardware, especially cheaper stuff like this. If a machine like this can't run a game from 2006, chances are it's not going to run something from now very well either. And, well, that's pretty much the case. Outside, I was getting around 30 frames per second, but as soon as I went inside the Imperial City, I dropped down to like 18 frames a second, and that's just not playable, of course. Next, I installed Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which seemed like a fool's errand at this point to try to get anything to run on this, but I tried. And I got about six to seven frames per second average in the in-game benchmark. Not great. All I'm going to say is you're not going to be playing games on this pretty much in any way unless it's maybe a browser game. I couldn't even install something simpler like Fortnite because there's just not enough storage there to install it onto. To round this out and kind of finish it off, the laptop isn't necessarily bad. I've used things that are much worse, but it's not great. For all but the most basic use cases, the corners that have been cut here are going to severely impact your experience. 
The webcam, for instance, just shouldn't exist there. They could have used that screen space for something else. They could have brought the screen down and made it larger. They could have made the bezel smaller. The processor at this point is just weak and outdated. We're on the 10th gen of processors, with the 11th coming out very soon, and this is an 8th gen. The integrated graphics are just awful. You aren't going to be playing any games on this at all. And of course, you're buying something this cheap. I guess you don't expect to, but it would be nice if there was an attempt made at least. There isn't really enough RAM to do much of anything, whether it's just browsing the internet or doing basic office work or even running Windows, to be honest. 4 gigabytes is just not enough. Granted, you could buy another 4 gigabyte stick of RAM and throw it in here, but is it really worth doing that when you could just spend a little bit more and get something that has 8 gigabytes already in it, or more for that matter? Quite frankly, the only thing this device is even really good at, if you can even call it good, is browsing the internet. And even that's not a great experience. I don't know why you would buy something like this when you could get something like a Chromebook to browse the web on for the same price, if not cheaper, that would do it better. Quite honestly, if you need a computer and you've got 400 bucks, maybe look to the used market because something like this just isn't a great experience. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.